Hey guys, so I thought I'd make a quick video about Blue Screen of Death 2.0. Uh, thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the things that worked in the original design, some of the things that didn't work, and then some of the changes I'm making for the next competition. So uh, why don't we just jump right into it? So here's Blue Screen of Death 1.0 uh, as he sits after the dark competition, its first competition, which was in Dallas a few weeks ago. Um, I would say for the most part, he fared pretty well. Um, there's a few big gouges here and there uh, from some of the other bots, but um, generally speaking, uh, you know, he's in pretty good shape. Um, so uh, I can pop the lid off and, um, you know, everything, everything looks pretty good inside. I didn't have any um, uh, radio failures, uh, the battery, uh, stayed in place, the power switch kept working. Um, so yeah, uh, he was still running. He finished uh, all the bouts. He was still driving at the end of all the bouts, which I think was, uh, you know, one of the goals was to kind of have a bot that was still running at the end. So uh, that was good news, but um, there were definitely some issues and I'll start uh, talking about those now. There are three main issues with the design of Blue Screen of Death 1.0. Um, the first is the clearance between the weapon tooth and this pocket. That was one issue. The second issue was the overall strength of the motor. Uh, as you saw in the last fight, the finals, this got ripped out, completely ripped out. So that certainly was an, a, an issue. And the last issue had to do with the, the drive wheels and uh, how much play developed in them. So uh, let me talk about each of those right now. So the first issue with the weapon blade was the clearance here between the weapon tooth and this pocket. Uh, I only have, I think, a millimeter or two clearance there. And when this tooth started hitting things, it started to get all uh, gum smashed up and, um, and uh, it basically caught uh, on this pocket. So that was the first issue. I'm doing two things to address this problem. The first, so this is a, a new chassis that I machined and then a new weapon disc. Um, the first is I've made uh, more clearance here. So there's just more room between the tooth and that pocket. Um, and then the second thing I'm doing is uh, the original weapon disc was just a solid piece of aluminum, one piece. Um, this is one piece of aluminum, but the tooth itself is made from a, a tool steel. So there's an insert that's screwed in. And uh, I think this tool steel will be much less likely to get uh, uh, deformed and hopefully won't catch on that uh, pocket in the way the uh, aluminum tooth uh, got deformed. The next issue with the weapon system just had to do with the overall integrity and strength of the uh, of the weapon on the motor um, in the last fight or for most of the day the the, the weapon had been doing great and um, uh, was uh, you know giving hits and taking hits uh, but in the last fight I got flipped over at one point and um, uh, physique blacks weapon was able to get underneath my weapon disc and it just with some uh, tremendous force this ripped completely ripped this out uh, ripped the shaft out of the motor, separated the motor, and um, and uh, yeah, so that's definitely uh, definitely an issue I wanted to address. I think one of the reasons uh, that shaft got got uh, torn out uh, was due to the fact that there's just this little C clip. This is uh, the the standard motor, and there's just this little C clip uh, holding that shaft in place. And I think when the uh, when the, the disc got hit, it just sh um, shore that uh, clip off or the clip went flying and the whole motor was allowed to separate. Um, so what I'm doing to address that is with this guy, you'll see the original on the right and the new on the left. And you can see there's a pretty big difference going on here. Um, I've made a, a new shaft for this motor and I've made uh, threaded ends. There's actually uh, two very thin uh, nuts on this end and having two allows me to back one into the other so I can tighten these two together without compressing compressing the shaft uh, too much. Um, I've also added this uh, little thrust bearing 
Um, these are hardened thrust washers and then there's a little thrust bearing in between there that I think will take some of the loads of the, um, uh, of the shaft as it, as it hits things. And then uh, last but not least, I also added a, uh, a nut on this end. It originally only has um, this uh, set screw and uh, I just machined off this top surface and added a nut for uh, good measure. So uh, those are some of the changes to the motor to address the uh, overall integrity issue. Here's a detailed view of the uh, new motor shaft I made. The original is on the left and then the one I'm making is on the right. I had to increase the length to make room for the uh, nuts and also that uh, thrust bearing. Um, you can see in the original there's just this very tiny, very shallow groove that's for that C-clip. And I think that's part of the reason that it got uh, pulled out so easily. There's just not much for that C-clip to bite into. Um, uh, the way I'm making these is with some, um, it's precision ground four millimeter shaft material. You can just buy it in McMaster car. And um, you do, I did find out you want to get the actual ground shaft material. I thought I might be able to get away with uh, some four millimeter socket head cap screws and just cut these down. Um, and then I could just put a nut on the end and use use the screw as the shaft. But it turns out they're, they're just a little bit undersized um, and that makes enough of a difference. So here's the shaft material and it's just, you know, just a hair uh, under underneath four millimeters. So it'll slip into a four millimeter ID bearing. Um, but the socket head cap screws, they're, you know, a good 0 0.1, 0 0.14 millimeters undersized. And that, uh, that difference is, is too much and it creates some play in the motor. So, um, so I think you, uh, you want to use the, the ground shaft material. Then I'm just using a metric die to, uh, create the threads, um, and, uh, cutting cutting these off in a little mini chop saw I have uh, cut the threads and then the last thing is to grind this little flat for the uh, set screw on one end of the motor but um, that's how I'm making uh, making these shafts the last big issue I had was with the uh, drive motors um, they never completely failed but they were very close to failing and actually in some of the fights uh, in the videos you can see that uh, blue screen kind of hesitates and stops moving and that was when uh, motors uh, uh, stopped working for a second or two and the issue was that um, we just I just developed a lot of play uh, in all of the wheels um, really bad and I mean this is this is just spinning freely that's not even engaging the motor anymore um, and I think what was happening is you can see that the, the uh, wheel is just cantilevered out on the motor shaft. There is no support. Um, so that motor shaft is taking all the loads and if it got thrown up and banged down, that's uh, loading, loading the wheels. And also when it hit things, you know, it's uh, putting side loads on the wheels. So um, at first I thought it was just a bad motor, but then I noticed, uh, you know, this was happening to all the wheels and, um, or all the motors and so they it, it, it did make it through the day I, I replaced one or two of them but um, this was definitely an issue that uh, I don't think this this had uh, another fight uh, in it uh, so that was definitely something I wanted to uh, try to fix for the next uh, competition the way I'm hoping to uh, fix this is simply by uh, supporting the wheel from the outside so what I've done on this new chassis is added these uh, holes that are on center. Uh, they're on the center axis, the, the center wheel axis. And um, what I'll do is, uh, if I can get the screw in, is basically there, uh, you'll see it go in and it should line up uh, just perfectly with the wheel hub. And um, that will now uh, give it uh, support on both both sides. Um, this is flush so it shouldn't be uh, hit off and uh, that's yeah that's how I'm hoping to uh, fix the uh, play issue. It's interesting how one uh, 
design change can have a cascading effect. Um, so I talked about uh, adding these nuts and this thrust washer, um, but you'll see that grows the overall height of the motor. And um, I was already kind of at the limit uh, on Blue Screen of Death 1. Uh, the, the chassis was basically the same height as the motor. Um, so now with this added height, I've actually had to um, uh, increase the height of the whole uh, bot by, uh, you know, four or five millimeters. Um, you can see, I think you'll be able to see the differences in height there. And by uh, increasing this height, uh, I ran out of room with the Bainbot, uh, the smaller wheel, so I had to go to these uh, next larger wheels. And of course, I'm, you know, you're growing the height of the chassis and you're adding bigger wheels, that all adds weight. And I was, uh, again, at the uh, just a gram or two under on blue screen of death one. So now uh, in CAD, I could see that I was going to be over, uh, over the weight. Um, so I've tried to uh, pocket out things uh, where I can. That's what these pockets are way down here. I'm trying to remove as much material as I can um, to minimize weight. Also with the wheels, I ended up uh, spent a few hours uh, making a fixture and then machined out these uh, Bainbot wheels to uh, lighten them up. And I think each, each the this larger wheel is now almost uh, the same weight as the smaller wheel. So we'll see how uh, close I get when I put all the components in. But uh, again, one 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 little change here, and all of a sudden you're <laughs> thinking about uh, how am I going to save weight uh, somewhere else. So uh, these things have a cascading effect. So those were some of the issues with Blue Screen of Death 1.0 and some of the changes I'm making uh, for Blue Screen of Death 2.0. Uh, I'm going to put it all together and take it to the next competition and uh, we'll see how it goes. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.